So section uh, 1.4, measuring angles. The key concept for an angle, our definition, is that an angle is formed by two rays with the same end point. First thing we need to know, right? So angle is formed by two rays with the same end point. The rays are then called the sides of the angle, and the end point is called the vertex of the angle. Okay, so there's a couple extra definitions you need to make sure to know. All right, the sides of an angle and the vertex of an angle. So the next thing that we need to know is how to name an angle. And there are three ways of naming angles, okay? You've got to be careful about the first one. The first one, just name it according to the vertex, okay? So if we look at the diagram here, we have an angle. Remember that the uh, vertex of the angle is that shared endpoint for our two rays that form the angle. So we have our two rays, ray AC, ray AB form our angle. A is then the vertex. Notice, it's the only angle drawn, right? It's the only angle in that diagram. Therefore, it is okay for us to name it according to its vertex. All right? It's okay to name it according to its vertex because it's the only angle there. So we could call it just angle A. That's fine. Okay? The problem is, what if we have more angles at the same vertex? Okay? If there is more than one angle that has that vertex, you can no longer call it angle A. Because then the question becomes, well, which angle A are you talking about? See what I'm saying? So if there's only one angle that's there, then yeah, just call it angle A. If there's more than one, you can't do that. You have to then go to our next way of naming angles, which is using the points. Okay? We need three points to name an angle. The middle point is always the vertex. The vertex has to be in the name of the angle, okay? So the middle point is always the vertex, and then the other two points are just points on the other rays that form the angle. So for example, we have uh, ray or angle BAC, angle BAC, because point B is on one ray, C is on the other ray, and A is the vertex, okay? And you always put the vertex in the middle, so it's angle BAC. But that's the same thing as if you wrote it backwards. There's nothing wrong with saying angle CAB, okay? There's nothing wrong with putting it backwards as well. Um, something else you need to know about naming angles is that angle symbol. That angle symbol. The book is able to print stuff really nice and crisp so you can see exactly what they're doing, right? And so they have a nice angle symbol that looks like that. Um, when I'm handwriting stuff, I start writing fast, and therefore my handwriting starts to get sloppy. Sometimes that angle symbol starts to look like an L or a C or something else. And so what I do is I like to put a little arc on my angle symbols to help me distinguish that, hey, that's an angle symbol, okay? By doing that, it does a couple things for me. One, sometimes it just makes me slow down so I write it a little neater. And two, if I write it like that, it's definitely not going to get confused with an L or a C. Now, I suppose it could... Con it could get confused with other things, but it's not going to be an L or a C, okay? So you're going to see me do that. If you want to do that as well, by all means, write it that way, okay? If you choose just to use the angle symbol, then you have to make sure that I can tell it's the angle symbol and not an L or a C, okay? All right, so we would have angle B, A, C. Okay, um... There is one last way of naming angles, and this shows up once in a while. Um, you are not able to do this on your own. Okay, this is the way that the book is going to na name angles. Problems are going to name angles. It's a way for us to talk about angles, but I don't want you to just start throwing numbers into the diagram. Okay, you can't make up your own. They have to already be there. Okay, so if they have, like in this diagram where there's a little number one inside, that's not saying that that's the measure of that angle. That's not a one degree angle. Okay? They're saying that that's angle one. They're just naming it that way. That's angle one. Okay? So if they have numbers already set up for you, then by all means, you can talk about the angles that way. Okay? Questions about naming angles. What angles are in terms of this class and how we talk about them or name them. Any questions?
And let's practice naming angles real quick. So naming angles. We want to know what are two other names for angle one. Well, the first thing you need to do is identify which is angle one. So I'm going to use red to outline angle one. So we see where the number one is. It's inside that little angle. So that is the only angle we're talking about. Right there is angle one. So what would one name for that guy be? Anyone want to give it a shot? Chris? Angle JMK. Angle JMK. Make sure you put the angle symbol out in front. JMK. That is a perfect way of naming that angle. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay? Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Notice that he put the vertex in the middle. The vertex of that angle is M, so M has to be in the middle of its name. Okay? Well, then what's another way we could name it? Angle M. Careful. Oh. Careful. Is that the only angle M in the diagram? Oh. It's the only angle 1. I agree with that. It's the only angle 1, but it's not the only angle M, so we can't do that. Good try, though. Thank you. Yeah. Angle KMJ. Right. We could just flip the name around. Absolutely. We could just flip the name around and call this angle KMJ. All right, so there's our two other names. How about uh, um, part A here? What are two other names for angle KML? Well, now KML, let's make sure we know which angle we're talking about there. There's point K, there's point M, there's point L. So we are talking about this angle. Angle 2, angle two absolutely. Nothing wrong with calling that guy angle 2. And what's our other option? Flip it around, so calling it what? Angle LMK, absolutely. Make sure you put the angle symbol out in front. LMK. What was that? Only L was the middle point. Okay, so there we go. Now the question is, would it be correct to name any of these angles angle M? Well, we already kind of talked about this. The answer to that is no. The answer is no. But now, why? Well, because there's actually three angle M's. There's the red one, there's the blue one, and then there's angle JML, the big one. Okay? So, no, we can't. There are three angles with M as the vertex. If I could write today, it'd be wonderful. Okay. Okay. Questions? All right. Some other things that I'm hoping are review for you, but if not, then just pay attention. We can learn it now. Um, first off, when I talk about the interior of, of an angle or the exterior of an angle, you need to know which parts I'm talking about. This diagram, of course, is the absolute best way to describe it. Just look at the diagram, now you know, right? But it, I like to also think of it if, what, what if the angle was like Pac-Man's mouth? Okay? If Pac-Man is able to eat something, if it's inside Pac-Man's mouth, that's the interior of the angle. Okay? Otherwise, we're talking about the outside or the exterior of the angle. Um, some other things that we need to know about is how to measure angles. Okay? Um, angles in this class are going to be measured in degrees. If you move on uh, to trigonometry or anything like that, you'll learn this other way of talking about them. It's called radians, by the way. But um, we don't deal with radians in this class. Everything we work with in this class is in degrees. So, degrees, we basically think of a circle. Circles have 360 degrees, okay? Which is why if you're watching the X Games and they talk about somebody doing a 360, they just, they spun around once, right? Easy peasy, okay? So, um, circles 360 degrees, therefore half of a circle is 180 degrees. 
Okay? And right now, that's what we're going to be talking about, is those measurements from 0 to 180 degrees for our angles. All right? Again, if you take trigonometry, they're going to expand that to thinking about different sized angles, okay? Very large angles. But right now in this class, we're only talking about angles between 100, 0 and 180 degrees. Okay. So, there's our protractor. And yes, we will use protractors in this class. You do not need to go out and buy one. Okay, if you have your own, you want to use that, great, bring it. Otherwise, I will provide one for you that you get to keep and have it forever. Yeah. Wow. Don't worry, it's cheap. Okay, anyways. But I will provide you with a protractor when you need one, okay? So let's uh, talk about how to measure angles, our protractor postulate. This is the exact same concept as our ruler postulate from the other day with segments. The only difference is, rather than measuring segments with a ruler, we're measuring angles with a protractor. But pretty much everything else is the same. Okay? Everything else is the same. The, the math jargon on this says, consider ray OB and a point A on one side of ray OB. Every ray of the form OA can be paired one-to-one -one with a real number from 0 to 180. All they're telling us here is that if we take a look at this angle, by the way, what would a name of that angle be? Angle AOB. Are, are there any other angle AOBs up here? No, there, there's only one angle with O at the, for its vertex, right? So we could just call this angle O, right? Okay. Well, if you look at ray OB, ray OB is lined up at zero on the inside set of numbers on my protractor. So I'm going to say that has like a coordinate of zero, okay? And then if I keep looking at the inside track of numbers coming along here over to ray OA, that's lined up with 125. And so just like in our uh, protractor, or I'm sorry, our ruler postulate, we can find the angle measure of this angle by simply saying, and by the way, here's notation for you, the measure of angle AOB, that little m out in front means we're now talking about a number, okay? The measure of angle AOB is going to equal the absolute value of 0 minus 125. Now, of course, on this problem, if this was the homework problem, I would not expect to see you do that. Hopefully you all know that if this goes from 0 to 125, what's the measure of this angle? 125. Absolutely. That's good. That's great. Do that. But you've got to know that there is a formula here or, or an equation to use when it's measured in different ways. Okay? So you can still do this for all of our angles, just like you could for segments. So absolute value of a negative 125 gives us an angle measure of 125. And what are the units we're using to measure angles? Degrees. Degrees. Okay. Degrees. All right. So what's being done here is one thing that some folks have a hard time putting their head around if you're not used to it already, is what we're measuring when we're measuring angles is we're measuring the amount of rotation. Okay. You are measuring the rotation. You're saying, okay, if we start with this blue ray, we are then saying, what if this O was like a hinge and we were able to actually move those arms, right? What was the rotation to go from here, rotate, 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 over to here where it stops? That's what we're measuring is that amount of rotation in the angle. Catch what I'm saying? Okay, that's what we're measuring. So that is 125 degrees of rotation in the angle. Okay. So, using that protractor postulate, we're able to now measure angles from any location. Of course, if you're the one setting it up, if you actually have a protractor in your hand and you're measuring an angle, it is always going to be easier to measure it up along with the zero. Okay? A couple of uh, notes, and I'll talk about this on Monday when I put a protractor in your hand. I call this part the, ver the bullseye of the protractor. The bullseye always lines up with the vertex of the angle. That's always how you do it, okay? So then it's usually easy to just go ahead and line it up with zero. So then you can just go over, okay, what's that angle measure? And you're done. 
But sometimes on homework, they're going to say, hey, measure it like this. And so you have to do exactly what I just showed you. What is the, we'll call it the coordinate of ray OD? Where is D lining up on there? And go to the inside. We can use the outside if we want to, but use the inside tracks because it's smaller here. Looks like 32.5. Absolutely. Good call. So that's at 32.5 degrees. How about OC? Careful, be careful which way we're reading it from, right? So this is going to be 135 degrees. And so then to find the measure of this angle, the measure of angle COD is going to be the absolute value of 135 minus 32.5. Well, 135 minus 32.5, I believe that is 102.5. And so therefore, the measure of angle COD is 102.5 degrees. It doesn't matter if you actually line up one of the rays with the zero mark. You can actually measure an angle from any position on the protractor as long as you know to use the protractor postulate. Okay. So we are running a little short on time here. So there are a few things that I want to remind you of. You've done these before. You know these already somewhere back in your brain. First off, an acute angle. An acute angle is an angle whose measure is between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay. If it's less than 90 degrees, we call that an acute angle. And they will look like this. If you look at this diagram, Something that looks like that is going to be an acute angle, okay? A 90 degree angle is called a right angle. And it will look like a nice square corner, okay? But the issue with 90 degree angles is you can only positively say that a diagram is, an angle in a diagram is 90 degrees if one, if they tell you it's 90 degrees, or if they draw this little box in it. That little box indicates that it's a right angle and it measures 90 degrees. So watch out for that. Obtuse angles have an angle measure greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. We are always measuring the interior of an angle in this class. Okay, again, take trig, they'll talk about other types of angles. Okay, but here we're always measuring the interior of an angle. So we're talking about this part, so it can only go from 90 to 180. Okay, so that's an obtuse angle. If you get an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees, we call that a straight angle. A straight angle is also known as a line. It's just a line, okay? A straight angle is also just known as a line, but they measure 180 degrees. Okay, um, one last thing I'd like to talk about before we uh, uh, leave for our weekend there are just a couple of questions on this on your uh, homework, but I want to make sure you see it here quick. And that's congruent angles, okay? Congruent angles, if you remember what congruent segments mean, congruent segments are two segments that are the same length, right? Well, congruent angles are then going to be two angles that are what, do you suppose? Same, same, size. same size, same measure, right? They'll have the same angle measure. So right here, look at the diagram for this. Right over here, this diagram is showing the perfect situation. We have two angles, angle A and angle B. Notice that they are marked with one little arc. That little arc is marking that they are congruent, just like with segments where we use the little dashes. We use little arcs in angles, okay? Nice. So the little arcs are showing they're congruent. Therefore, we know that angle A is congruent to angle B. And therefore, we also know that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B. Okay, please remember that this notation is comparing numbers. This notation is comparing things. Okay, in your mind, you're thinking, well, they mean the same thing, and you're, you're basically right, but we talk about them slightly different depending on the situation. Okay?